guys it's time for the second video of the three video series on Jenkins as a cron management system we will go through the installation and administration guide in this video section so <clears throat> before before starting this uh, session I'll, I'll like to go through a recap small recap on what all we have covered in the earlier video so in the introduction we covered uh, design choices why we chose Jenkins over other frameworks there are some comparable frameworks it's it's like if you simply search by a keyword they will appear uh, there are some cons of Jenkins uh, yet to be figured out but yes we can create a wrapper around it no no big worries around it so uh, jumping to the di today's discussion about uh, installation and administration let's start with the master slave setup so this setup is normally used if you check out here master and these two are slaves the best place to check this out is this website builds.apache.org it uses it as a CI tool but just as an example if you see red ones are the failing builds and blue ones are the passing builds this is a build queue and these are all the slaves on which the build is actually running so now uh, in a similar kind of fashion we have configured a smaller setup where two slaves are there one master is there we have given executor permissions to master also that's the reason that two nodes we can see uh, that a master can run but ideally the master's job should be just to display the jobs it's, it's a web website which is running it's the master's job the slave's job is to run the actual job the resources which will be consumed the CPU time hard disk which will be consumed is of slave so I hope you understood the structure master is just to display and inform the slave to run a job the slaves responsibility is to actually run a job okay with this uh, I'll I'll go and manage Jenkins oh uh, before coming on to master slave architecture I'll, I'll like to show you how to install Jenkins actually it's it's very simple installing Jenkins you can search around I won't be installing directly but I'll just show you where you can f figure out how to install Jenkins installing Jenkins since mine is a red hat distribution I'll go here I'll w get uh, the repo then I'll rpm import it and yum install Jenkins as simple as that uh, I'll just to be sure that Jenkins service is running we'll check sudo service Jenkins status see Jenkins is running here uh, and this is the actual box on which Jenkins is running on port 8080 if you want to see on what port it is running you see HTTP port this is the Jenkins home see Jenkins home and what all configurations Jenkins has done are written onto this folder so if you want to change any config so config.xml is a file you have to go after depending on the parameter which you have to change that is something is altogether a new session so we will not take it yeah coming back to the master slave architecture uh, see master is there two slaves are there by default if you don't have any slave master will be the node showed up we will try adding a new node mm, let's name it at test there are two options dump slave and copy existing node so I'll copy from the existing node and uh, uh, th this option will be only showed when uh, when you have some some existing nodes into it some already pre-configured slaves into it else you have to add it as a dumb slave the options are same I'll, I'll walk you through uh, there is some description to be added number of executors now number of executors means uh, you have to define how many parallel processes can run on that slave it can be uh, like thousand any any number 
any integer. Uh, the constraint on the number of executors is it should not exceed the the CPU given on that slave. That's it. The job should not take more CPU than your slave, else it will die. Remote root directory, it's the dot Jenkins directory by default. Uh, here is where when uh, so as I said, master's responsibility is just to communicate the slave to run the job, uh, to trigger the job. So master will send in signal uh, via SSH that this is the command, run the command. And when it is running the command, all the console logs are written into this directory. And then it is SSH backed to the master and uh, through which we can see the console logs. Now labels, next labels is a very important, uh, I'll say uh, label uh, through which you identify which job should run on what server. So this is the label. Uh, if, if we go and help, are they used for grouping multiple slaves into one logical group? For example, if you have multiple windows slave, you have jobs that require windows then you will configure all your windows slave to have label windows so this is just tying up your job with the server the slave server that's the importance of label in our kind of setup we have kept one to one one server will hold one label or you can also do uh, there will be three servers holding one label so you will say when my job a runs on label x which means this job A is capable of running on any of the three servers. That's all. So we have kept it as one to one mapping. There are some default options. Usage only build jobs with label restrictions matching the node. And uh, this is important launch method. So launching is to be done for a host. You can give an IP address or you can configure this in ATC host and then you have to add a username or password or SSH for a Unix box. Mm, in an ideal scenario you can give an IDRSA file path here. I have already configured that's the reason I'm not saving here. Save so in that in this drop down the user will come and you will save this. It's better to keep uh, the slave available on online as much as possible and just save hit save if you hit save this this node will be created I'll hit save see uh, there is some issues with uh, this node it will it will suddenly tell you that uh, this is already a unix slave or whatever it is okay this is about master and slave mm, I'll go through some interesting uh, configuration so this reload configuration from this what this does is uh, I, I showed you the Jenkins home path right that's where all the information of the builds the configurations are noted down you have to just click on this reload configuration from disk and in, and all the information will be reloaded here so suppose you have a crash Jenkins crash you have to configure a new system and then uh, reload the configuration from the existing thing and your Jenkins server will be up. Uh, installing plugins is very easy, very user friendly and there are a lot of plugins in Jenkins. So just click on any plugin and install without restart. That's it. That's the only thing you have to do there is there are a couple of options in manage Jenkins and uh, there is something as load statistics it will show you the graph of the load frankly speaking I don't understand this graph but there is a good description given below uh, you can figure it out especially the admin people uh, I like this uh, this step prepare for shutdown so what this does is it stops taking the new builds but it uh, it will actually uh, whatever build is running it will finish that build and then go to shutdown slowly so it's a safe shutdown kind of thing uh, that were the points 
for installation and administration in the next video we will uh, go, go through how to create and manage jobs thank you for watching this video uh, share some comments if you have regarding any questions